So, all right. So um, I've had a few questions regarding how to find um, the mean and the standard deviation from a, a frequency table. So I have a video showing how to find the mean and the standard deviation from a list of data values. Um, on a graphing calculator, I'm talking about the TI-83 or the TI-84. So let me do it for a frequency table also. It's very, very similar, um, not much changing, but one slight addition, right? So here's a frequency table. 58 randomly selected students were asked the number of pairs of shoes they have. Let X represent the number of pairs of shoes and then the frequency. So if you're not sure how to read this, right, you have to backtrack and, you know, like refresh on frequency table, but there are two, two in this case, two rows or two columns. It could be a vertical table. In this case, it's a horizontal. And the first row represents the number of pairs of shoes. And then the second row represents the frequency of each. So if I were to rewrite this data set, I would write the number four eight times. I would write the number five six times, I would write the number six, seven times. So this is the amount of times that these data values show up in the data set. Okay, that's why we call it frequency. Now, this is a particular type of frequency table where the X values, in this case, the number of pairs of shoes are not a interval of numbers. It's literally just a value. So what I mean by that is like, here's another type of frequency table, it's vertical. And the X column, the random variable column has intervals instead of just numbers. And then you have your frequencies. So I'm going to show you both cases with, um, with um, the graphing calculator. So we'll start here. Um, all right, so first of all, I'm going to write it down here. Uh, let me show you. Hold up. Hold up. Let me share my screen. Let me share my graphing calculator screen. I'll share the whole thing because I need to go back and forth. All right, so um, here's the graphing calculator that I want. And then, come on. I got too many, too many things happening here. Here is my data set, right? So if you recall, so this is my TI-84 plus, you could, 83 is the same thing, um, you, you know, same process. So we've lived here in stat, right? This is what we do, stat and then calc, right? If we want one bar stats, that's what I showed in my other video where we want mean or standard deviation from a list, right? But this time we, we want a frequency table. So anyway, either, either scenario, we have to input the values. So stat and edit. Right? This is where we are to input our values. Now, if you have lists with numbers in it, like my list one, I'm going to get rid of these. All I have to do is scroll up where it's highlighted and then clear enter. The whole thing will cancel. Now, if you're using an app, it might be a little different. If you're using the actual graphing calculator, that's what I'm talking about. Do not press delete. You press clear and enter to clear out your, um, your list. Okay. So let's input in L1 my pairs of shoes. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going from four basically to 13. So four, enter, five, enter, six, enter, seven, enter, eight, enter, nine, enter, 10, enter, 11, enter, 12, and 13, right? So that's my X column, quote unquote, in this case, the number of pairs of shoes. Um, I went from four to 13. Now in L2, actually let's label that. Okay, let's, let's remember where we put that. So I put, just in case, I put these in L1 and I'm gonna put my frequency in L2, right? You wanna know where you put your lists. So my frequencies are gonna go in L2. So let's scroll over with our right arrow in L2. And then we're going to put our frequencies. So eight corresponds to four. So I want to make sure that eight is next to four. And then I'll just keep going down. And then six, seven, five. Let's do that. Six, seven, five. Right? Five, four, six. Five, four, six. Three, nine, five. So three, 
nine, five. Here's another thing I wanna make sure. I wanna make sure I have the same number of values in the leftmost column in L1 as I do in L2, because it is a frequency table. There should not be you know, a longer list um, on one column than there is on the other because they, they go with each other. The frequency represents how many times, you know, these are represented or shown in the data set. So if you have too many numbers in L2, something is wrong, okay? So backtrack and double check that you input your values correctly because that obviously is gonna suck. If you do that wrong, then everything else is you know, gonna be off. So, you know, verify. Um, and then, you know, 13 corresponded to five, right? 13, five was the frequency of 13 pairs of shoes. That's it, all right? So now, second mode. I like to go back to my home screen just to clear and have myself a nice clean screen so that things don't get jumbled, jumbled just in case. So if I ever wanna come back to my home screen on top of mode, you see quit, I press second and then mode and it brings me back, right? Now we're gonna calculate something. So I'm gonna go back to stat and I'm gonna scroll over to calc. So this is what I'm gonna write for you guys. You want to do stat, this is the first part, and then edit. This is to input your list, right? Inputting list, input list, L1, L2. Then you're gonna to go to stat, back to edit, because we're now gonna calculate something. And what we're looking for, uh, I'm sorry, it's on edit, I don't wanna edit this time. What we're looking for now is calc, we want calc. Stat, let me go back to my home screen. Stat, we already did edit, I edited, you know, I put my list in, but I want calc, I wanna calculate something. So I'm gonna scroll over with my right arrow to calc. And we're looking for one bar stats. So let me write that for your notes. You got stat and then calc, and then you want one var stats that's what we're looking for and this is what we use when we found the mean and the standard deviation for you know a basic list of numbers but um in this case we we want a frequency table okay so all right so one bar stat so i have list frequency list and calculate it tells you exactly what it wants so my list is an l1 right? This is my X values. So list L1, I already have it here. Let's assume this was clear. How would I put L1 in there? So on top of the number one, you see L1 in blue. On top of the number two, you see L2 in blue. On top of the number three, L3, right? So if you ever want to put L1 or L2 or L3, you press second first to highlight, and then I want L1, so second, and then one. And I have L1 in my list. My frequency list, that's the list, that's the, that's the column, or in this case, the horizontal row of the frequency, frequency list. And I put it in, remember where we put it, in L2. So I want to put L2 here. So second, and then the number two to pull up L2, and then calculate. And it's very similar, right? The only, the only change from what we did, if we had a list, was we didn't use frequency list. Now we're using frequency list, and boom, pops everything up. Um, we remember, let me take this actually, take this little thing here. We remember um, what these variables mean, right? We have to know what the variables mean. And so you have to obviously know how to, you know, convert from your variable into your, you know, verbiage. In this case, X bar, just with X bar, this is our sample mean, right? sample mean. The rest of this, you know, you're not necessarily using here. Sx is your sample standard deviation. Oops, spelling stuff wrong. Sample standard S, my, my STDEV is abbreviated for standard deviation. This is your population standard deviation sigma x, but typically we don't use that. Sample size is 58, right? Which that's my N. And we know that there are 58 randomly selected students. So you could verify that, you know, you input your stuff properly with that too. And then it has your five number summary here. And, you know, um, we're not using that right now, but if you did need it, it has your five number, sum not five number summary um, below, right? So if you wanted to see this little arrow here, scroll down, it actually gives you your five number summary, your min, 
your first quartile, your median, which is also your second quartile, your third quartile, and your max. I'm not using that right now, so I don't want it. I don't need it. I'm just going to give the sample mean of this set of data 8 point, we're going to go 8.3. Typically, round off rule for, for mean is where you go one more digit than represented in your table or represented in your data set. So these are all whole numbers, so I might round to the nearest tenth. However, if you're using programs, right, you have to follow the direction, round how you're asked to round. Um, sample standard deviation is lowercase s. And in this particular example, 3.1 rounded to the nearest tenth. And that's my mean and my sample standard deviation from this particular frequency table. Um, I'll do one, uh, how long have I been on here? I'll do one more real quick. Um, if I'm doing this type of frequency table, so the difference between the last case and this case is the fact that my X, my X column, which could represent whatever here, age, whatever, is an interval, right? Instead of just a number. So it's a little bit different, right? It's an interval of numbers. So how do I, and you know, 24 is the frequency from this interval, but I don't know, you know, what these 24 data values represent from this interval. I don't know if they're 20, 21, 22, 23. I don't know if they're 29. So the thing is like, I can't necessarily write out my, my, my data set from this type of frequency table, whereas I could from this type of frequency table. So I need a number to represent this interval. I need a number to represent this interval so I can represent these 28 values. I need a number to represent this interval so I could represent my 30 um, data values. And the best way to represent the interval is with uh, the class midpoint, the midpoint, right? It's kind of like the average, the middle, the middle value. Um, <clears throat> so if I wanna find the class midpoint of the first class, if you guys remember, I said to add the ends and divide by two. Okay, so, if, so let's clear this out, 20, plus 29, be very careful. You wanna do the sum first, and then you wanna divide that by two, 24.5. So the first class midpoint is 24.5. And then, you know, I could continue on. I mean, the rest of them, you can you could do this each time, but you know, it's gonna be 34.5. And then you could verify my numbers. I talked about this a little bit in my other video too, you know, with class width and such, but, um, Find the class midpoint of each class, right? And you could do it in a couple of different ways. In this particular case, you can add the ends and divide by two to find the exact middle. These midpoints are gonna represent these frequencies. So now the only difference between um, what I did before and what I'm doing now is, is, okay, so is my L1, my actual, L1 is my class midpoint. It can't be an interval of numbers. It has to be one particular value. So the way to represent the interval is with the class midpoint. So now my L1, just like here, L1 was pairs of shoes, this one. My L1 is my class midpoint representing each class. And my L2 is the frequency at which these are repeated. So it's an approximation. You'll find that the mean and the standard deviation for this kind of situation will it be approximated. Um, it's not gonna be as exact as if I were to have the list of data values because I am using the class midpoint rather than the actual 24 values. I'm using the class midpoint to represent those 24 values. But you'll find that it is a very close approximation to the actual mean or standard deviation. So um, we're gonna do the same thing. It's not really very different. The only thing that I added was now find the class midpoint of each class instead of, you know, just use these values because now I have intervals for this frequency table. All right, so let's um, go back to stat and edit because I'm going to input values and I have numbers in each list. I want to clear them out. So let's clear out L2. I'm going to scroll up. So L2 is highlighted and I'm gonna say clear and enter. So now all my stuff is going in L2, but the actual list is not deleted. That's why I say don't press delete. I'm going to go up to L1. So it's highlighted, clear, enter. And now that is, is uh, clear. And then I'm gonna go back to my list and say L1. I'm gonna put in L1, my class midpoints, 24.5. So let's do it. 
24.5. I think I could do these by memory. 34, all right, all the way 64.5. 24.5, 34.5. Forty-four point five, fifty-four point five, and then sixty-four point five, and that's it, right? And then my L two is going to be my frequency twenty-four, twenty-eight, twenty-four corresponding to the first class, twenty-eight corresponding to the second class, thirty, fifteen and 21, 30, 15, and 21. And again, you know, you wanna make sure you have the same amount of each in each um, column, same amount of numbers, right? Because it comes from a frequency table. So I have my class midpoint in L1, my frequency in L2, I'm good to go. I'm gonna go back to my home screen, second quit, second mode to quit so that I can have a nice clear screen, right? And um. If I look at this stat edit, I did that stat calc one of our stats. That's what I want. So stat, I want calc, scroll over one of our stats, the first one, enter. My stuff's already in there. I mean, um, again, if it weren't, I would input it. Uh, one more thing for those of you that have a TI-83 where it doesn't look so pretty, where it asks for lists and frequency lists, you're going to go, it looks like this, one bar stats, and then it has parentheses. Some of you, it just asks for this. So you have to remember to put L1 and then comma L2, okay? So this is how it's going to look for those of you that don't have it represented this way. So like 83s, TI-83s are older calculators. They might not have it this way. So you're going to do it this way. Put a comma in between each, and the comma can be found above the seven. So you would put one of our stats and then it has parentheses, then put L1, then put a comma, then put L2, close parentheses, and you will get the same thing that we get. Okay. My sample mean for this particular example is 42, we'll go 42.9. So X bar is approximately 42.9. And my sample standard deviation, S, is approximately 13.7, okay? And that's my sample mean and my sample standard deviation from a frequency table in particular. Not very different from actually doing it in a list of data value, but um, slight, right? Extra something, okay? Not bad though. So.